I did try handwritten notes if you saw me studying for the final and on my vlog. This video would not be complete without flashcards because I'll show you on the screen. So if you go through my flashcards, you see I have different sections highlighted. And this is very popular among Korean med students. And within penicillin, there's four types. Hi, my name is Ashley. I am finally back for a study methods video. I originally wanted to talk about all the study methods in the finals week vlog and rank each of them but i realized that what works for me might not work for you and medicine is also so diverse my study techniques for microbiology is different from pathology anatomy and it requires adaptability for each subject i hope by the end of this video you'll have kind of an idea of what study methods there are and what might work for you During the lecture, there's students that are listening and not listening, paying attention and not paying attention. I know this because I've done this before. But so basically, for students that are not paying attention, we kind of study on our own during the lecture, almost like that, but we still keep an ear on the lecture in case they mention something that will be high yield, like this is gonna be on the exam, this is something important. Spend this time to make flashcards and make notes because there's no time to make flashcards later so we kind of make it in during class while the lecture is going on and keeping an ear on what the lecture is saying so that is one of it also i don't know if you have but i definitely have heard and watched videos of youtubers talking about how they don't take notes during class and um why taking a notes in class is like a waste of time something like that i do agree with this but only to an extent so previously I know a lot of students, like medical students, people in my class that make notes during class, like kind of transferring what is on the lecture slides into like a document. Um, we don't really do that anymore. We kind of just write down anything extra that the lecturer is saying instead. For, for what I do, if you watch my vlogs, you know that I love annotating. So I typically annotate my lectures. I convert it to PDF and annotate on my iPad. I also really like writing on the side. I do this aiming to make me more focused during the lecture, but I actually find that I still drift away even though I try to annotate during the lecture. And I actually don't read my annotations that much, especially for finals, I don't read them. For the last few lectures though, I've tried typing out my annotations instead of writing them. That was definitely really helpful and a lot more efficient in helping me focus during the lecture, but there's so much like evidence about how writing enhances your memory. So I haven't decided exactly whether I should type my annotations or write them yet. After the lecture, I still like annotating my notes and I typically create a margin and I summarize what is on the slides into that margin. I highlight and write little notes on my PDF. I don't really recommend this because it's not a great study habit. It gives you the illusion that you are studying, but you're actually not retaining much information because simply just writing little summary notes it's a little it's okay in terms of studying but you're not really recalling the information and you are not really organizing your thoughts highlighting is also something really passive that and you're not really engaging with the knowledge in addition to this another thing is it's so hard for me personally to study based off our lecture slides and just a powerpoint for example let's say we're learning about a process the lecture slide spreads out the knowledge, so it's hard to distinctly distinguish each step. And another example is, let's say we talk about treatment plans for a disease, and it's a complex disease. There's different treatment plans for different subcategories of this disease, and it's hard to link and relate everything together because the information is spread out onto like your little slides and it's hard to really study based off just the pdf you kind of have to make notes like at least for me i can't really just gather all my information just by looking at the slides and making and highlighting on the slides i have to kind of gather my thoughts together 
this leads us to the importance of mind maps and this portion of the video is sponsored by Scrindle. I'm going to first show you a lecture about antibiotics, which I'm going to use Scrindle for. Scrindle is an organizational note-taking app and it can create digital mind maps. Here's a part of the mind map that I created for my lecture. I haven't finished studying this lecture yet. This lecture is 80 slides and so I'm just going to go over part of the lecture. So first taking a look at the slides. This slide is about antibiotics gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, and there are different antibacterial agents. So there is protein synthesis inhibitors, cell wall inhibitors, nucleic acid inhibitors, um, so DNA synthesis inhibitors. So these are the different types. So this is cell wall inhibitors, cross-linking, and for cell wall inhibitors, there are two classes beta-lactams and glycopeptides. And let's look at beta-lactams first. So for beta-lactams, if you see here, there are four types of beta-lactams. Penicillin, cephalosporin, blah, blah, blah. And within penicillin, there's four types. There's already four types of beta-lactams and within one of the four types, penicillin, there's four types as well. Pen and then cephalosporin, relate to penicillin because they have similar profile and mechanism of action. So this is just two separate things, but they have like a small connection together, which is why you need mind maps to help you like gather your thoughts and treatment plans. If you're studying medicine and you don't use mind maps, I'm speechless. You must be a genius. I can't. And I've actually used mind maps that are not Scrindle before, which is why I like Scrindle so much because in Scrindle, you can personalize and move your cards around. And in like previous subscription digital mind map apps, like I couldn't move the cards around. It were like they were automatic. It's like automatically right here and everywhere. But for Scrindle, you can move them freely, which is something that I really like. This way you can shrink the mind map a little bit and have all the text and different sections together. So this is what I really like about Scrindle. There are pre-made templates in Scrindle and here, this is the planning board one. In the example, I didn't add pictures, but you can add pictures in Scrindle as I definitely hope to use Scrindle during the new semester. There's one minor detail if Scrindle can improve on is including all the text and having different sizes for the little cards. Like sometimes if you add too much text, the card is the same size and then you don't see all the text, but when you click on it, you can see everything. Even if you don't use Scrindle, making mind maps is really important in organizing your thoughts and organizing all the knowledge. This will help you memorize and understand. This video would not be complete without flashcards because med students, we love using flashcards. We use flashcards so often. The two big main flashcards come from Anki or Quizlet. So usually it's either people use Anki or Quizlet. There's a lot of other apps, but Anki and Quizlet are the two main big ones. I personally, I'm part of the Quizlet gang. I don't know how people do Anki. For Anki, you have to do them every day because they reschedule your cards. It's like spaced repetition and active recall. Forget about the spaced repetition, just active recall. I take forever to finish Anki cards. This is one of the main reasons why I chose Quizlet is because I can get through Quizlet decks much quicker compared to Anki. For Anki, like I have to, it would take me three hours to finish a 200 card deck and on Quizlet, it might only take me two hours. So that's the main difference here. Quizlet, I'm a lot faster when it comes to finishing flashcard decks. Also, the Quizlet interface is a lot nicer and more modern compared to Anki, but I am going to try to use Anki this semester. People from upper years, they usually pass down their flashcards, so I've been using the Quizlet decks from people from upper years. But for Anki, I couldn't. I just couldn't. I have to make my own cards to finish my Anki decks. I like my flashcards big, so I like my answers very long. I like long answer flashcards. I don't like short little nitty pitty details. I like long answer flashcards. So usually if you go through my flashcards, my flashcards are very big questions and you have to answer these points, but they're not too big. They're medium size, I think. I like them. I'll show you on the screen. So if you go through my flashcards, you see I have different sections highlighted and I 
bold different sections this is helping me to memorize so i like my flashcards like big chunky paragraphs but if i use my maps then i would make smaller questions but lastly we're going to talk about notes i'm going to start with one note so i make chart notes so i have my notes as a chart and a table i have one side and the other side it's kind of like my margin idea still i have big questions on the left side of the table and then one column of the table and the other column of the table have all like the answers like my actual notes i don't think i'm gonna really do this anymore this is because for one note you can't really export your notes and print your notes out and i kind of need this printing my notes out feature this is because i have oral exams and during the oral exams while you wait you can bring your notes with you but they have to be they can't be digital you can't have anything digital it have to be paper you can read your paper notes while you wait for your turn so that's why i need to print out my notes and one note would just not work for that this is a similar thing with notion i actually really like notions toggle notes so if you don't require printing on your notes you can consider using notion as well you can have like toggle notes and this is really similar to flashcards. You can like toggle the note and then like see the note or not, kind of giving that active recall aspect. It's very popular among the YouTube study community as well. The reason why I also don't use Notion is because when you print out the notes, the font is very big. So this is something that I don't really like. And but I didn't use it for immunology. It was very helpful for me to understand the question, but um, I would want to print out my notes. So it wouldn't really work written notes physical written notes on blank pieces of white paper this is very popular among korean med students like i always see them like doing this and they like fold a piece of paper and they write out their notes and like it's kind of like a summary they don't really copy everything it's more like processing the information for me i wouldn't write my notes out because when i printed the notes out that were like tiny fonts it was like this thick and this wasn't even all my notes it was like the thickness of a textbook i did try handwritten notes if you saw me studying for the final and on my vlog it's okay i would use it for lectures that are boring so lectures that or lectures that are hard and you have a hard time focusing because it's so hard and you don't really understand much or you're so tired you're not really focusing and your brain isn't really retaining the information then I would write them out. So this would help me focus more because I'm physically writing. Other times I would write handwritten notes if I have extra time, but I'm still deciding because for, for typing my notes, if I use good notes and I type my notes out on a piece of paper, like with a half and half, if I do it on good notes, then I might do handwritten notes. But if I do it on Google Docs, then there's no handwritten notes. I haven't decided exactly what I'm gonna do yet. It will depend on what lectures I have this semester, but mostly I kind of have an idea of what I want to do. I hope you have kind of gathered a lot of study methods that med students typically use from this video, and I hope you enjoyed. I will see you next video. Bye.